Hey everyone, so welcome to my playlist on single variable calculus. So in the last lectures, we talked about graph of a function, limit and continuity of a function. And today we are going to talk about one of the very important or the strong condition on a function, which is nothing but derivative of a function or differentiability of a function at a given point. So that's what the agenda is. So today we will see the definition of a limit of a function, the precise definition. Then we will try to understand this definition. It's very simple. So we'll try to understand this using graph. Then we will see what does this represents geometrically. That means we are going to see its geometrical interpretation. And then we will see its physical interpretation. So that's what the agenda is. That's the overview I'm going to give you today. So what is derivative of a function at a point? Okay, this is called as f dash of a. It is nothing but limit of some ratio. Limit of a ratio. So what is this f of a plus h? So there is an increment in a and then you take the function value minus f of a upon h. Okay, so this is one notation f dash of a. Another notation is you call dy by dx at x equal to a or where my y is f of x or you call df by dx at x equal to a or you call df upon dx at a. So these are the notation to represent derivative of a function at a point. Okay, but many times I'll be referring this one because this is much more convenient to write. But yeah, these are another notations. Okay, now let's try to understand what does this ratio represents. Okay, so keep this in mind. I'm going to use this. So for that, let's try to draw the graph of a function. So suppose this is my x, y axis. And suppose this is a graph of some function. And let me call this as my a. So this point, so this is my f of a. As we have seen in the graph of a function, you can find all the connected links in the description. So if you have not seen earlier, please go through them. Okay, so what is this point? This point will be my P, where what is my P point? My P point is A comma F of A, right? And if this is A, suppose my H is positive, so this is my A plus H. For H negative, you will be having somewhere here, but let's play with the positive thing. Okay, so once from graph, one can see that. So let me call this point as my point Q. And what is my Q point? My Q point is A plus H. So how does the graph points look like? We have seen graph points looks like input comma output. What is the input? A plus H. What will be my output? It will be F of A plus H. So this is F of A. This point is F of A plus H. And this is my Q point. Okay. Now we draw the line joining these two points. You draw the line joining these two points. Now what is the slope of the line you have seen earlier the slope of the two line is nothing but y2 minus y1 upon x2 minus x1 okay so what is the slope of line pq it is y2 minus y1 f of a plus h minus f of a upon x2 minus x1 so a plus h minus a so you can cancel plus a and minus a so this is the thing so if you recall earlier the definition which I wrote, if you ignore the limit, this is that ratio, right? So the, that ratio is nothing but slope of the line joining the points P and Q. Now if you take limit H going to zero. So as my H goes to zero, limit H going to zero. So as my H goes to zero, your A plus H, as H is becoming zero, this will approach towards A, right? And as these points will keep on approaching towards A, where does your point Q approaches? So for this, we had Q point over here. If this point is here, my Q point will come here and I will get the slope of this line. When I'm here, my Q point will come out to be here. So I will get the slope of this line. So if you come on closer towards this, this secant line will become a tangent line it will only pass through the point p which is a comma f of a so the which you had the you had a secant line earlier and when you take the limit h going to zero this secant line is becoming the tangent line okay so this is my ultimate final line this one 
and why, what I'm doing, I'm taking this ratio, which is nothing but the slope. So when I take the limit, your derivative is nothing but slope of this tangent line because limit of this is nothing but the slope of this tangent line. And if someone asks you what does the derivative represents geometrically, so derivative of a function is a number. And what does that number represents? It represents the slope of the tangent line at the point a comma f of a. Okay, so if I only write f dash of a, and suppose if I get the answer as 3, then what is f dash of a? So this 3 is the slope of the tangent line. Tangent line at which point? So see, see tangent line is a, it touches the curve only at one point. So this is my tangent line, this. And the slope of this tangent line, I am saying 3. Okay, so final upshot is derivative geometrically, it's a number and that number represents the slope of the tangent line at point A comma F of A. Okay, don't say it is the slope of the tangent line at point A. Point A is here, but it is the tangent line is here and it is passing through the point P which is A comma F of A. Okay, so it is the slope of the tangent line passing through A comma F of A. So I hope the definition is clear to you that limit and this ratio and this is the geometrical interpretation. Now let's go for the physical interpretation. So suppose you have a function f from r to r say y is f of x then what is dy by dx it is the derivative. So it is now see what is your y? y is a function of x that means what your y is depending on x. So suppose if I take y equal to x square plus 1 if I keep on changing x, I get different different y. That means what? My y is a dependent variable because it is depending on x. And x can be anything. So x is my independent variable. So this is what? This is so as soon as I change x, there is a change in y. So as soon as there is a change in x, there is a change in y. So therefore, derivative is also referred many times as rate of change. Derivative helps us to measure the rate of change of a quantity okay so because this is nothing but change in y with respect to the change in x and we are taking the ratio that's why the rate of change so for example uh, suppose or another word is instantaneous change instantaneous change instantaneous rate of change now let me explain you this with the help of an example uh, now suppose if a car is going Suppose a car has traveled 100 km distance in 5 hours. Okay, so it has traveled 100 km of distance in 5 hours. So what is the velocity? How will you determine the velocity? It is the distance upon time, which is nothing but my speed. And it's nothing but 20 km per hour. So the speed was, or you can say the velocity was 20 km per hour. But see, this is the average velocity. Okay, so like you can see he has covered, I mean that person has covered 20 km per hour and therefore in 5 hours that person has covered 100 km. But then see this is the average velocity. It might have happened that okay, initially he is in the city, so that time he travelled at the speed of 10 km per hour and as soon as he came to highway, he travelled at 30 or 35 km per hour. Right, so that will change. It's not exactly 20 km per hour the speed that that person has followed. So this is called as the average velocity. This is not the instantaneous velocity. And but suppose if I want to find the instantaneous velocity, suppose if I want to find what is the speed at after 2.5 hours or say 2 hours and 20 minutes. So if I want that speed at that point, at that moment, then again the derivative will help you. Okay, so suppose for example, uh, your distance is represented by a function. Suppose the distance d of t is say 4 t square. Okay, so in the interval 0 to 5. At 0, he is at home. And after 5 hours, he has covered 100 km distance. Okay, now question is what is the speed? What is the speed at t equal to 5 by 2? That means at 2.5 hours. After 2.5 hours, what is the speed? So what you take? You take the derivative. So what is d prime of t? I hope you know the, the derivative of t square is 2t. So 4 into the derivative of 2 square is 2t, which is nothing but 8t. And at so d prime, what is the velocity at? 5 by 2. So when you do that, 8 into 5 by 2, which is nothing but 
टू वन जा टू फोर जा सो एट दैट मोमेंट एट दिस टाइम ही स्पीडोमीटर विल बी एट ट्वेंटी किलोमीटर पर आर ओके एट दिस मोमेंट इफ दिस इज द डिस्टेंस फंक्शन विच वी आर रिप्रेजेंटिंग ओके इफ आई वॉन्ट टू सी वॉट इज द स्पीड एट आफ्टर थर्टी मिनिट्स वन बाय टू सो वेन यू पुट वन बाय टू यू विल गेट वेन यू आर पुटिंग वन बाय टू ओवर हियर वॉट यू विल गेट यू विल गेट फोर किलोमीटर पर आर सो दैट द स्पीड इनिशियली विच इज सो डी डी प्राइम ऑफ वन बाय टू इज एट इन टू वन बाय टू विच इज नथिंग बट फोर किलोमीटर पर आर सो दैट्स हाउ इट रिप्रेजेंट्स द इंस्टेंटेनियस रेट ऑफ चेंज सो दिस वॉज वन एप्लीकेशन अनदर थिंग लाइक सपोज इफ क्यू इज द सपोज इलेक्ट्रिक चार्ज ओके देन वॉट विल बी डी क्यू बाई डी टी द रेट एट विच द अमाउंट ऑफ चार्ज इज फ्लोइंग दैट दिस विल रिप्रेजेंट्स द इलेक्ट्रिक करंट सपोज इफ आई वॉन्ट टू गिव यू अनदर एग्जाम्पल सपोज इफ यू हैव अ बॉल विच आर थ्रोइंग सो यू फ्रॉम हियर यू आर थ्रोइंग दिस द पैराबोलिक पाथ सपोज इट इज रिप्रेजेंटेड बाय फंक्शन सपोज एट गिवन पोजिशन टी द पोजिशन ऑफ द बॉल इज गिवन बाय टी स्क्वेर प्लस वन समथिंग टी स्क्वेर प्लस ए टू टी माइनस वन वॉट एवर सो गिवन अ टी यू पुट द वैल्यू ओवर हियर टी इज माई टाइम इट विल गिव यू द पोजिशन ऑफ द बॉल दैन बट इफ आई वॉन्ट टू सी वॉट इज द स्पीड एट द गिवन मोमेंट देन अगेन यू टेक द डेरीवेटिव ऑफ द फंक्शन एट विच पोजिशन द बॉल विल बी एट रेस्ट अगेन यू टेक द हेल्प ऑफ द डेरीवेटिव सो लाइक दिस देर आर प्लेंटी ऑफ एप्लीकेशन फॉर डेरीवेटिव इट रिप्रेजेंट द रेट ऑफ चेंज सो दैट्स वॉट यू मीन बाय द डेरीवेटिव ऑफ फंक्शन इज जोमेट्रिकल एंड फिजिकल इंटरप्रिटेशन इफ यू हैव एनी अदर डाउट रिलेटेड टू द डेरीवेटिव ऑफ अ फंक्शन यू कैन आस्क मी इन द कमेंट सेक्शन एंड इफ यू हैव अंडरस्टूड एंड इफ यू लाइक द लेक्चर देन डू नॉट फर्गेट टू लाइक शेयर एंड सब्सक्राइब थैंक यू